All right, everybody, how you doing? Economic Ninja here. I wanna go over the infrastructure bill and this uh, driving tax that everybody's talking about. It is sort of trending today, so I wanna talk about it. I know this is a super weird angle, but you gotta work with me. So I've got my notepad, <laughs> just joking. I found some cardboard. All right, so I got my cardboard. Got my cardboard notes, let's do this. All right, everybody's very concerned about the, uh, the driving tax. Uh, it sounds absolutely crazy, but I wanna explain something to you how uh, these kind of things get snuck in. It's a very slow, methodical process to get these wild taxes through. The last big one that just come to mind is actually the income tax. I wanna remind people that they snuck this through a long, long time ago, about a hundred years ago, and they said, don't worry, it's only for the rich. And they kept that true, uh, the poor, poorest people in this country still pay no tax uh, because they have this little gap uh, at the bottom and people don't realize that. But back then they thought, oh, the rich, you know, and they started taxing there and then they brought it down, brought it down, brought it down until just about every single person in this country is taxed. And it's a big deal. And so we're gonna talk about this because there's all these fact checkers out there saying, no, there's not a tax on driving. So it says here, we're talking about the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, I wanna point out a fact that they try and make it sound really super good. It's for infrastructure and jobs, but really only a small portion of it's actually going to infrastructure. A lot of it is going to, like I talked about a couple weeks ago, bailing out pension funds. I think, what was it the other day? Uh, I was reading, it was like $125 million is going to bail out a California teacher's pension fund. But before you get upset at California, the last one had like 200 and something million dollars that went to bail out a bunch of pension funds all over the country, okay? So that's a whole nother video. I've done them before. The pension system is completely broken and we need to prepare for that. All right, so under this uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, if the bill's passed, it will set off, it'll start a pilot program, pilot program. We're just starting. Go easy. And what is that? Well, it's a voluntary national motor vehicle per mile user fee. And again, they want you to say, it says in their pilot program. So that's the mainstream media. That's how they're uh, advertising it, okay? So don't worry, it's a voluntary. Well, there's a lot of voluntary programs that turn into not voluntary over time. So this is the way they slowly get you here, okay? And stick around to the end because I'm gonna explain how you get ready for this. They like to say that the legislation does not include a new driving tax. And they like to use the air quote. I'm using air quotes, driving tax. Oh, come on, it's not a driving tax. This is voluntary if you wanna pay it until you, you know, it's already there. And there's gonna be some provisions that they put in there. I'm, I'm just telling you, this is how they start. So how do we um, deal with this? This might sound completely crazy to you, but this has been in the works for a long time. If you go and look at websites like, um, oh, I'm completely blanking out as the, uh, that's not the ECB. Put it in the description if you uh, know it. It's the by like 2035, you will own nothing and like it. You know, the way that they wanna move everybody to this new green platform is that you won't, you know, be owning your own vehicle. You'll be driving around in, you know, public transportation. Um, and it's gonna be good for the economy and it's gonna save you lots of money. And the first way they do this is they, they make it so expensive to own something, let's say, um, that where after a while you just go, you know, it's just cheaper for me to go ahead and just, you know, jump on the bus. And so it is coming. And is there something we could do? We can, we can voice our opinions. We can lobby. We could do all those things. We could push back. That is one thing. But at the same time as trying to do all that, you need to prepare for this. You need to save money. Um, you know, a long time ago, let's say 30 years ago, if I would have told you that you had to register items that you own, right? You'd probably think I was nuts. And I think you know where I'm going with this. If I told you that you had to carry an insurance policy for certain things that you own in your home, because what if they all of a sudden hurt somebody? You'd say I was nuts. What if I told you that to use a part of that item, you would have to show your ID and then pay a tax, not only just a sales tax, but like a fee, right? On top of that, to get a part that goes inside that. You'd say I was crazy. But what's happening is systematically, and I know where you guys are going with this with Cali, but, but I wanna try and bring you into this understanding of what they're doing with driving. They're gonna make it systematically so difficult and so expensive, you're just simply gonna give up. And I don't want that. Don't get me wrong, I don't want that, right? We have to talk to our uh, congressmen. We have to uh, stand up and fight for our rights. We do, but I also want you to be prepared on the backside. So what's one thing you can do? 
stay out of debt. If you're in debt, get out of debt. Become financially independent because things will get expensive. Inflation will keep ticking up over time. Even if they fully reset the uh, currency, it's going to be because of a collapse. And then that one's going to start ticking up too. That's what all fiat currencies do. They get printed more and more and more over time, and they make the policymakers richer um, than the, the middle class and the lower middle class, okay? So I want people to start preparing themselves now for these higher costs. If you're prepared, then you could take advantage of all kinds of situations. And I'll give you an example. You know, you see rich, wealthy people all the time flying around in private jets. And you might think to yourself, man, I would never spend that kind of money, right? Well, when you make an exorbitant amount of money, all right, the private jet doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's a little bit. You know, if you're making, you know, $100 million a year and you only spend 1% of that, $1 million a year on transportation, that's really nothing, right? It's just like if you made $20,000 a year and you ended up spending $200 a year on transportation. Now, I know that sounds wild and, and, and don't stick to the numbers. I'm just going general. I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a dream and some cardboard. You know, I wish I could find some paper around here to write on. But my point being is that I'm just using these general, uh, this general theme. Um, if you're financially independent, these higher costs that may today seem like a lot to you won't seem like that much when you're financially independent, okay? I don't wanna go too long because I gotta get this video uploaded into you guys because there's a lot of people with a lot of questions. I hope this answered or, or jogged some thoughts, um, some, some good questions, put them in the comments below. I thank you so much to all the new subscribers. If you're not subscribed or you are unsubscribed, if you don't mind taking a look at that, tap and subscribe, that'd be awesome. YouTube likes to do that to this channel. All right guys, with that being said, The Economic Ninja is out.